Hello everyone, today I've got some inspiration to pimp up and elevate your summer dishes with my four smashing summer sauces. They're all good enough to be served as dips on their own. They each only take 10 minutes to be whizzed up, so at your next summer party, everyone's gonna think you're the absolute goat for having made them from scratch. But they couldn't be easier, and they're quite heavy. Yes, you could reach for a jar from the supermarket, but making your own sauces is always more special. They're all really versatile and go with grilled meats to serve at summer barbecues. We've got Herbie Piquant Salsa Verde. Robust roast, r r r it's very difficult to say. Robust roast red pepper romesco made creamy and thickened with almonds. Everyone's favorite garlic mayonnaise, aioli. And my favorite, ah! it. the romesco went for a bird. And there's glass on the floor. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> and lastly, my favorite of the four, my barbecue mango sauce. It's not got loads of sugar in like normal barbecue sauce. It's sweetened with dates and mangoes. Makes it sweet and sour, utterly delicious. You're gonna to want to dip everything in it. Right, let's get whizzing. So for all of these recipes, I'm using my trusty Maggi Mix. I will include the link below. It is a serious bit of kitchen kit. You could just use a blender and I will be using my Nutribullet for a couple of the recipes. But I love my Maggi Mix because I'm a little bit lazy in the kitchen and I don't like to make a pastry dough from scratch. No, no. So I use it in here, whiz it up so that the butter and the flour gets crumbled together. Things like soups, obviously they blend them. And as you'll see in a sec, it emulsifies to perfection, dips and dressings and the sauces we're about to make. So, busy busy, let's get busy. Oh God. Romesco, and I have to say, it's very unlike me to have all the ingredients put out in little bowls and everything. Far too organized, but I've literally got an hour before the kids come home, so I just had to get on it. Very off brand, but I like it. Romesco is from Catalonia in Northern Spain, made with roasted red peppers. It's sharp and sweet, roasted and robust, and also with a gentle creaminess from loads of almonds. It's really good. We're not roasting red peppers from scratch, no, no. I've made it easy on us and we're going for roasted red peppers from a jar, you know, the fire roasted ones with the little black bits on for the extra flavor. Also in Romesco, you have beecho peppers. Because we don't live in Catalonia and can't get our hands on them very easily, I'm doubling down on the roastiness and the sweetness by putting some sun-dried tomatoes in. And to maximize on that gorgeous sun-dried tomato flavor, I'm gonna use a quarter cup of the oil from a sun-dried tomato jar, so lift them out with a fork when you weigh them out. And then the raw almonds. These add creaminess to an otherwise quite sharp, acidic, and zingy sauce. The link to my substacks down below and the recipes for all these four sauces will be written out properly so that then you can find out exactly how much you need of everything. Two little garlic cloves. Crushed, always crush with the skin on. The skin just stays inside once you've crushed it through the crusher. And then no fiddly faffing, peeling of the papery garlic skin. So I've gone for things in my kitchen that you and I can get our hands on. So sweet smoked paprika. I'm also saying that the chili flakes are optional because at my barbecues, I've always got nosy children running around who like to dip their fingers and everything. And I just can't be bothered to deal with the drama of, oh, it's too hot. You know what I mean? And we're heading to Spain, so it's really gotta be sherry vinegar. But if it's too niche for you, then red wine vinegar would be fine as well. And this brings that lovely punchy acidic backbone. Oh, that is smelling good. Salt, start with half a teaspoon and then season to taste. And then whiz it all up to make a chunky paste. <laughs> That's your chunky paste. Every so often the blades caught a nut and went as you carry on until you stop hearing that noise, which was about a minute. If I don't get something on this t-shirt, it's gonna be a Christmas miracle. Extra virgin olive oil should be saved for salad dressings. It's a precious commodity. And when you're making sauces, there's no point in adding the full quantity of extra virgin olive oil. Its flavor often can't be detected, especially against the big robust ones going on in here. So what we're gonna do is add half extra virgin olive oil I'm gonna turn the blades on and then pour this onto them in a slow, steady stream, and that's gonna thicken and emulsify the sauce. And that's not all the oil. Remember I said we needed to reserve the oil from the sun-dried tomato jar. I'm doing the same thing again. There's so much flavor in these sun-dried tomatoes, and so if you ever get a jar of this, make sure that you keep the oil and that you cook with it or make lovely dressings, or let's romesco sauce. You've still got plenty of oil in the sun-dried tomato jar to keep those guys juicy for another recipe. There she is. Hello, Romesco. That pouring and trying to film was like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. I'm sorry, it wasn't very good, but there she is, the most glorious, luscious Romesco sauce. Oh my goodness. It would really just be incredible as a dip for chips, but I would serve this with my spatchcock chicken. I'll share the recipe to that below. Or keep it Spanish and do it as a little side to some tapas. Yeah, some saffron roasted new potatoes like Patatas Brava style, dipped in that. Oh, that'd be bloody gorgeous. Right, onto the next sauce. What's the next one? Salsa Verde! Fun fact, I served this at my wedding with barbecue butterfly leg of lamb. Da, 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 da. It's 
it's not really a fun fact, I suppose it's just a nice memory for me, but that it's a big fat vouch I thought was good enough to serve at my wedding and I suppose that's enough of a reason for you guys to try it. There are loads of salsa verdes from around the world that we can take inspiration from. This is not made with tomatillos, don't be disappointed. This is more of a chimichurri one, so it's vinegar forward, loads of fresh herbs, perfect for summer and delicious with grilled meat. Two big bunches of the fresh herbs, I've gone for coriander and parsley. Straight into the Nutribullet, it'll be fine. Don't forget the stalks of your herbs, you can chop finely, put into ice cube trays and fill with olive oil, freeze them, and then whenever a recipe calls for you to cook off some herbs to begin with, you've got them fresh from the freezer to hand. This really is barely even a recipe because you're literally just putting it in to a blender and whizzing it up. I suppose I'm quite a big fan of that, you know, minimum effort, maximum impact. One clove of garlic again, never peel. Done with your skin. Red wine vinegar, one tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons of capers, meant to be rinsed, but it's fine. Only three little anchovy fillets. Now, if you really are adverse to them or you're making this and you want to serve it to vegans or veggies, then obviously leave them out. But they're just such a subtle umaminess and they add a really tasty backbone to the end of this. So I would bother. Stupid thing to say. Obviously, I would bother because I've written a recipe with them in, haven't I? Right. One, two, a mashed up one, make three. Same again with your oils. No need to use full quantity of extra virgin olive oil, it's precious. Save it for your dressings. I'm gonna use half extra virgin olive oil and half avocado oil, which is a flavorless oil. You could also use grapeseed oil or sunflower salt. Quarter teaspoon. Whiz them up. Does anyone do that with a neutral bullet? Shake it like a cocktail shaker. It's just what I do when I'm blending herbs because often they get caught up in the top. You just give it a shake and then the blades catch those herbs down and ah, they're gone. Why do I make it sound so horrible for me? Luscious and oily, verdant green, herbaceous, little bit of umami and salty. I mean, what more can you want in a summer sauce? This sauce is so versatile, it will be a hero at your barbecue and go amazingly with all the grilled meats and fish. Oh, and it would also be delicious with some grilled halloumi dipped into it. Probably serve it better than that, but we've got to move on. Right, who is ready to honk of garlic? Well, that's lucky, because next up is everyone's favourite French garlic mayonnaise, aioli. It's the perfect accompaniment to my salt baked sea bass, the recipe for which I will pop below. It's aioli in France, it's aioli in Spain, whatever you call it, it's one of those stonking good pre-dinner sauces that would get popped down on a Mediterranean table of a balmy evening on holiday. And I'd just carry on dipping all my bread into it and then be unable to finish what I'd ordered because it's so tasty. You could also style it up grande aioli style like this recipe below to make it look like you've done something very clever when really it's just an effortlessly easy no cook dinner. More garlic. It's summer. We're among friends. Who cares if you've got a little honky breath? Two cloves into the small bowl of the food processor. Garlic drizzle, the salt. We're gonna start with the juice of half a lemon, but let's keep the other half in case we need it to loosen the sauce or add a little bit more zip at the end. Squeezing it in, using the old lemon finger trick to collect the pips, the egg yolks. Obviously don't throw your egg whites away, keep them in the fridge for an extra lean scrambled egg or to whip up to make some lovely white meringue, maybe to go with an eaten mess that could be dropping here very soon. Whiz to combine. And then same again, not wasting my extra virgin olive oil, don't need to use the whole quantity, so it's half extra virgin olive oil and half flavourless oil. Turn those blades on, pour this onto my running blades in a slow, steady trickle, and then it's going to emulsify and thicken, and we can play around with the thickness in a sec. But you really ought to see this, haven't you? Come on. Yeah. Fucked it. Right, that's brilliant. I couldn't do the filming and the pouring at the same time and I added my oil too quickly, didn't I? Can you see how that looks like? Oh no, we don't want that. I'm really glad it's happened because I can show you how to rescue it if it happens to you. So I've poured that aioli into a jug, keep that to one side, and then into the empty bowl, I'm gonna crack a fresh egg yolk, another pinch of salt. But this time, I'm gonna pour it really slowly and not be trying to film at the same time. Rescued. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Because of my mishap, this is a little bit too thick for my liking, but that's fine because what we can do is let it down with the other half of that lemon. I'm gonna start with a few drops to begin with to see how liquidy it makes it. Yeah, that's more like it. Whippy, almost little soft peaks. Super creamy, garlicky, lemony, salty. And of course you can make the whole thing by hand. You don't need a food processor. You just need to put your egg yolks, your salt and your lemon juice in a large bowl and then pour your olive oil onto the balloon whisk as you're whisking constantly and it'll thicken before your very eyes. Much like this. Bonjour, Leoli. Next up. Now I 
I know you shouldn't have favourites as children, but if these sources were my kids, then the next source would be my favourite. It's mango barbecue sauce and you're going to love it. So I've just sliced half an onion and I'm going to bash this garlic up and slip it out of its skin this time. Jalapeno, de-seed it because we don't want it really spicy, but we love the flavour of the jalapeno in it. I'm going to dry fry this, so that means not adding any oil, so that everything starts to get a little bit charred and burnt. And then my mango. Hello! Next up, let's check on that pan, shall we? It actually smells a bit like a barbecue. The onions have started to soften and everything's got a nice kind of black charred look to it. In goes dates, mango and half a cup of water. Cover the frying pan, just let it bubble for about three minutes. We just want the water to evaporate and whilst it's doing so, it will steam through and soften the dates. The water's all evaporated, those dates are nice and soft and squidgy and everything's gonna blend together to make a smooth mango barbecue sauce. And what we're kind of making here, I guess, is a very quick chutney, or like a chutney smoothie. It's been of apple cider vinegar, and of Worcestershire sauce. It's a barbecue sauce colour, all right, isn't it? But without any brown sugar, there's normally loads of brown sugar in barbecue sauce. But there's enough sweetness from the dates and the mango to make this sweet and tangy and salty and sharp. Obviously, when you're blending hot things, do be careful. Ooh! Like that. Wow. Glossy mango barbecue sauce. I am sorry, but it's my favourite. No. You're going to want to dip chicken nuggets in that and bring it to your next barbecue. I'm feeling a little vegan jackfruit barbecue recipe coming on. Let me know if you would like that in the comments below or share this with a vegan who would like that. So there you are. These are your dream team to pimp up your summer dishes. These are my four smashing summer sauces that are going to take you through barbecue season and beyond. And they're all good enough to be served as dips. If you like the sound of the recipes, then full recipes are my sub stack. If you'd like to subscribe, please go for it, make my day. Happy summer. I hope these sources see you well. See you well.